Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your attendance tonight. I certainly hope that you take with you the magic of this evening and share it with everyone you meet tomorrow. On behalf of the Odeon Theater, I bid you all a good night. And fuck you all, lifeless pile of street trash. Fantastic show tonight, Mr. Dex. <sighs> Asshole sat there like a damned oil painting, Ricky. I did the silk dream for them. The silk dream, and they, they just sat there. Not a flinch, no applause, nothing. Some did applaud, Mr. Dexter. I did. Dan, I mean, Mr. Dexter, I thought you were great. Ricky, my dad's name was Mr. Dexter. You call me Dan. All my friends call me Dan. Yes, sir, Mr. Dex. I mean, Dan. Hey, thank you, Ricky. That really means a lot to me.
Congratulations, Dan. Couple more wrinkles, you look just like a giant testicle. Come on in. I'm decent. Decent. <laughs> now that's a matter of opinion, Dexter. Used to be quite the big shot, weren't you, Danny boy? Pretty damn good, they say. <laughs> Some say the best there was, huh? <sighs> what do you want, Stan? You know I like that, you Danny. You're to the point. All business all the time. My daddy used to say, that's the sign of a successful man. <laughs> well, I'm all about business too, Danny. Tonight's take? Tonight? <laughs> Try this week's take. The whole week? Ah, uh, don't start your damn whining. You know, if I don't do well, you don't do well. Stan, I had that auditorium at 65% Tuesday night. If I don't have a warm, paying ass in every one of those seats at least three nights a week, I can't keep the stinking lights on. I can't pay my crew, and I can't pay you. I have no control over the quality of clientele that your establishment attracts. Of course, that may have something to do with the half-naked burlesque dancing girls you so readily employ. <laughs> Certainly can't be for their technical skills. Skills? <laughs> I don't give a fuck about no skills. It's tits and ass, Danny. Purely tits and ass. It sells, and it sells good. Hey, I make money off those blonde bimbos, Danny boy. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. When I hired you, I had my preservations. I thought it might class up the joint a bit to have the great Dan Dexter on the ticket. Make a name for my little establishment. So when I lost the bishop, I took a chance on you. A big chance. A hack ventriloquist. I'd take that hack ventriloquist any night, Dexter. He filled my seats every night. Every Tom's dick that's hairy paid to see a grown man play with a doll on stage. <laughs> they fucking love that asshole. And Lucille, he or, 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 or she or whatever the hell it is, it fills the seats every Friday and Saturday night. Hey, they come from miles around to watch that faggot do whatever the hell it is he, she does. It's unique and it sells. It's what the people on this side of town want to see. Tits and ass. Have you even tried any of those PR ideas I gave you? With the proper advertisement and promotional... Oh, God. You don't even know what PR is, do you? You don't think a burlesque theater owner knows what public realizations is all about, asshole? Do you think any one of those poor fat slobs in the audience tonight came here because they saw the great Dan Dexter's ad campaign? How about the guy giving the rod to the underage hooker in the back row tonight, huh? <laughs> you think I should poll him? Ask him if he came here because of your great branding? <laughs> poll him. <laughs> now that's funny. <laughs> Listen, Danny. You need a new angle. Face it. You ain't hot shit anymore. Spice up your act a bit. Hey, get one of my dancing girls and train her as your assistant. Let her shake her little ass up there while you do your magic crap. Come up with a few new routines. Make make her clothes disappear. <laughs> she can run around the stage bare ass naked. And you can turn her into a dove or something. Hell, I don't know. Be creative. Give me something. Never. I've won the respect of every layman and magician in the industry 30 years... 30 years ago. But there is no way in hell, no way I'm going to drag my name and my good show into the sewer with your horde of deviants and misfits. No way. Yeah? Well, I got news for you, schmuck. 
You're on the bottom of the entertainment food chain now. You're just too fucking stupid to know it. You're a loser, Dexter. A washed up wannabe hack. I'll tell you something. You got two weeks, schmuck. If you don't fill my seats with something new and exciting that people want to pay to come and see in two weeks, then the great Dan Dexter is going to be the great unemployed Dexter. Got it? Two weeks! <laughs> the great Dan Dexter, my ass. Son of a oh. bitch! Oh, excuse me, Stan. I am so sorry. Fucking asshole. <laughs> Oh, I'm doing just fine, Mr. Hardwick. Good day to you too, sir, Mr. Hardwick. Uh, uh, ha have a great night, sir. Come to give you a hard time again, huh? Ron, that man wouldn't have come in here for any other reason. Oh, don't pay him any mind, Danny. Scumball con man running a third-rate nudie dive with talentless third-rate acts. He, uh... Well, I, I, I mean, I didn't mean it like that, of course, Danny. A uh, present company not included in that remark. I know you didn't. But you are right about one thing. I have to find a way out of this dive, Ron. If I have to go another week playing to the walking dead, I think I'm going to go mad. <laughs> well, from the sounds of it, Mr. Wonderful there may be giving you a way out in just a few weeks, huh? Oh, you heard that, huh? Well, I heard enough to put the pieces together. I've told you a thousand times, Ron, there's only one thing worse than a vampire, and that's a... A lawyer? No. W well, actually, yeah, but uh, uh, you know what I mean. An, An agent. agent. So you want me to give 40% to a leech who may not be able to do any more for me than I can do for myself? <laughs> Take 40% of this and I won't have enough for a loaf of bread and cab fare home. Uh, I think I'll take my chances. I'm bound to get a break eventually. Listen, I'm good, Ron. I'm not being vain or, or, or nostalgic or whatever. I know I still have it. Yeah, yeah, I know you have this obsessive notion that all agents out there are just demons in disguise waiting to drain your soul and steal your money. Well, listen, I've had one for the last four years. Pretty damn good one, too. Well, then hook me up with him. He sounds like the second coming of the Messiah. Oh, Danny. Danny, no blasphemy, my son. Preacher man says God will get you for that, boy. Oh, money, padre, home, sung to, sung to God, forgive him. Bless this child, he does not what he says. <laughs> you idiot. Hey, listen, I appreciate what you're trying to do, buddy, but I have two matinees tomorrow and a late show. I really do need to get some rest. Oh, all right, you hot head. But I tell you what I am going to do. And I won't take no for an answer. I'm going to talk to a few people this week. I'm going to find out exactly what options there are out there for you. Look, Danny, you are better than this. Okay, okay, well, enough of all this for now. You go get cleaned up, Danny, because we're going to go out on the town, find us a couple loose broads like back in the old days, and drink until they're beautiful enough to bang all night long. Oh, Danny boy, come on, let's go get... Shit faced. Let's find some broads and ride them all night long. Yeehaw! <laughs> no, 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 I can't, Ronnie. Oh, all right, all right. But listen, lunch, Monday afternoon at Rosie's Grill, and I won't take no for an answer. I, uh, okay, okay, Monday. Good boy, good Danny. <laughs> Fetch. Play dead. Roll over. <laughs> you asshole. All right, now don't forget. Monday noon at Rosie's. If I have any luck, I'll probably have some career-changing news for you by then. Well, Danny boy, you don't know what you're missing. I'm going to find me some titties and bourbon. Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> I may even pull the bourbon on the titties. <laughs> Shaking, not stirred, of course. <laughs> Cause Ronnie loves the booby!
Dan the Man. How was the crowd tonight, sweetie? Sold out, Lucille. Standing room only, and I'm getting a bid right up in the Daily Times tomorrow. Oh, sucked ass, huh? Oh, I'm sorry. It's a shame, too. You're so damn good at what you do. Oh, screw the assholes who can't see your talent. The rest of the girls know how good you are, and we know who you are. Oh, and that little stage boy? <laughs> My God, he worships you. I swear if you start a church, he'd be your deacon, baby. Yeah, well, you need to tell that to Hardwick. He thinks I need dancing girls in my act. Oh, honey, don't listen to that needle dick. Besides, we've all stood up for you. Oh, but it won't do any good. I'm afraid not with him. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. Most of the girls are frightened of him. Can you believe it? Frightened of that scumbag jerk? Oh, but not Lucille, honey. <laughs> He's frightened of me. Guess he can't quite figure me out. See, I'm more woman than he's ever had and more man than he'll ever be. <laughs> he avoids me whenever possible. Maybe he's afraid I'll tell someone of his, um, little hobby. Hobby? Oh, yes, honey. Hmm. Even in my circles, he's considered scum of the earth. <laughs> oh, come on, Danny. You can't tell me you haven't noticed all the little boys coming and going from his office late at night. Well, he goes out on the street and he pays homeless kids and runaways to come back here. Uh, you and know, he, Lucille, uh, I don't uh, think uh, I have the strength to hear this tonight. I'm, uh, I, I'm just going to go lie down, okay? Oh, I'm sorry, Danny. I'll stop. I don't want to give you nightmares. Yeah, too late for that, Lucille. Um, I'll just catch tomorrow, okay? Okay, Danny. But remember, if you do get an assistant in your act, you come see Lucille first, okay, baby? I'm 100% the best woman for ya. Okay, Lucy, I remember. Oh, I do have a lot of magical experience, Danny. Magical experience? You? Really? Oh, hell yes, baby. This girl's done the Vanishing Weenie Act every night for 15 years in a row. <laughs> Pure camel toe all the way, sweetie. <laughs> uh, good night, Lucille. <clears throat> good night, Danny. Mm. I'd convert you faster than a Baptist in a Pentecostal tent revival, honey. <laughs> you go. <laughs> oh, you still got it, girl. Oh, you can't deny this. Hey, you still got it, girl. You're one hot old faggot bitch. Hey. <laughs> Mr. Dexter! Mr. Dexter! Uh, over here! Over here, Mr. Dexter! Are, are you Dan Dexter? That's me. I'm I'm sorry if I alarmed you, Mr. Dexter. Yes, I, I tried to catch you in your dressing room earlier, but a rather unpleasant sweaty man told me, uh, get the shit out of here. Oh, yeah, that would be Stan. <laughs> you must be a fan of my work. Oh, indeed I am. Yes, indeed. <laughs> oh, oh, forgive me if I, I seem a bit nervous. Oh, now there's nothing to be nervous about, Mr. Uh... Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Gettings. My name is Carl... Gettings, um, here. Oh, well, yes, of course. You want my autograph? Well, I'd be happy to. Ah, uh, oh, oh, uh, well, um, uh, no, I, I, uh, I mean, uh... No? No autograph? Well, I, I don't mean no like no. I, I mean no like I'm... Well, well, well yes, I, I love your autograph, of course, you know, but I mean no in that I don't not want it. It's, it's just... Uh, oh, my... What I am trying unsuccessfully to say is, that's not why I'm here. Yes, that's it. Oh, oh, I get it. You're the guy Ron said he would talk to. Damn, that was fast.
It's been like 45 minutes since I spoke to him. Well, <laughs> he's a miracle worker. <laughs> wow, you're the guy. Hmm, the guy. <laughs> well, technically, that's true, sir. I'm I'm a guy. <laughs> However, I'm not. Uh, you're not the guy. Oh, no, no. I'm afraid I'm not that guy. <laughs> uh, what guy would I not be? An agent? Oh, yes, yes. I'm definitely not that guy. Well, then, Mr. Giddings, if you're not a swooning fan and you're not an agent, then who exactly are you? I am Professor Carl Gettings. <laughs> Glad to meet you. Uh, finally. Professor? Mr. Gettings, uh, before we both go insane, maybe you should explain what it is I can do for you. Uh, but it's not as much what you can do for me as uh, what I can do for you. You need to get to the point fast, Professor. I've had a really tough day and there's a cup of hot joe with my name on it waiting for me. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, yes, of course, the point. Yes, of course. Uh, well, you see, Mr. Dexter, the point would be um, I'm here to make you an offer that you simply can't refuse. Yes. Asshole! Uh, excuse me? That asshole, Ron, he put you up to this, didn't he? He's toying with me. <laughs> that insensitive jerk. Wait till I get my hands on him. Oh, no. No, no, Mr. Dexter, indeed. Neither myself nor anyone else is toying with you. I, I don't even know a Ron. I assure you, this is not a toying matter, Mr. Dexter. <laughs> I'm going to kill him. <laughs> okay, Doc, I'll play along. What are you selling? I sell nothing. I want to offer you a partnership of sorts, uh, one in which... Well, if all goes well, you could easily gain far more than your wildest dreams can imagine. Yeah, okay. Well, oh, listen, Doc, I, I really have to be going. I have no time for snake oil salesmen, and I definitely don't need a partner. Well, unless you happen to look good in a frilly white frock and stiletto heels, and I could hook you right up with one of our other headliners. Oh, Mr. Dexter, please. Can you tell me with all honesty that this is where you want your legacy to end? All the years of hard work building a dream, only to see it cruelly mocked by vaudeville tramps and dancing girls? I promise you, Mr. Dexter, if you will give me ten minutes of your time, just hear me out, listen to what I'm offering, and then if you decide I'm a snake oil salesman, well, then you have lost nothing but ten minutes. I'll happily leave you to your <clears throat> career. Tam, you're good. You really know where to hit, don't you? <laughs> okay, okay, listen. Ten minutes. That's it. You better have something worth my time. <sighs> Come on, I was heading down to the Aces Cafe. It's the only joint open at this hour. Oh, thank you, Mr. Dexter. Thank you, indeed. Yes, yes. That's all I'll need. Just ten minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you better not be wasting my time. So, um, what does an archaeologist do, exactly? I have to warn you, Doc, the coffee here is horrible, and their pie is even worse, but it's open till 3 a.m. Just a ticket when you play the late night shift. Oh, believe me, Mr. Dexter, I'm no stranger to late hours and bad coffee. <laughs> but it's not the flavor that we drink it for, is it? <laughs> yeah, true there. Okay, it's your dime, Professor. Dazzle me. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Uh, well, uh, uh, yes, well, where do I begin? <laughs> um, how about the beginning? Oh, yes, indeed. What a splendid idea. Yes, the beginning. Well, as I've already stated, I am professor of archaeology at Troma University. So do you have any specialty in your field? Well, I, I suppose if you say I have a specialty, that I've become quite enamored with the mythologies of ancient cultures. It's been my life's passion to study the legends underlying some of the greatest cultures on the planet. You'd be surprised to learn that many of the religions that exist today actually sprang forth from ancient... Uh, but, well, I'm not... Uh, I'll get to that later. Let me let me get to the point. Yes. Now, well, my university has traditionally, over the years, funded various expeditions, um, many of which have yielded some fantastic finds and, I must say, quite rare and priceless artifacts. The board was more than happy to hand me a nice fat check, as long as my work kept yielding them the publicity and notoriety that draws in benefactors with deep pockets and political prowess. Good for the status quo. <laughs> but a few years ago, my interests shifted slightly from the conventional to the uh, more arcane, um, the ethereal to be exact. Well, now that's the only word you've said so far that I do understand. You mean you began ghost hunting? 
Well, no, not quite. Uh, well, okay, maybe something like that. <laughs> but my last expedition was for an artifact that, mythologically based, if you wish, was a piece of ancient magic. Oh, okay. <laughs> I see this coming a mile away. Let me fill in the blanks for you. You went on a quest for some mythological magical thingy using the university's dollar. You came back empty-handed, and now they won't let you go ghost hunting anymore. Well, um, a more or less accurate description, yes. <laughs> Except for this one fine point. <laughs> I found what I was looking for, Mr. Dexter. Or at least part of it. Well, then what's wrong? The Board of Trustees should have been thrilled. Oh, yes, indeed, they should have been. <laughs> they would have been, uh, had I told them. You didn't tell them? Why not? Because, Mr. Dexter, what I found cannot easily be categorized. Why, well, I just couldn't find it within myself to hand over something of this magnitude to a greedy band of lawyers and bureaucrats who no more care about education and antiquity than, well, than the Pope cares about religion. Maybe I should simply cut to the chase, Mr. Dexter. There's no subtle way to present this. What I found is real magic. Not sleight of hand or crafty card manipulation, nor the misdirection of a clever performer. What I discovered has real power. Ancient, indescribable, and by all measures of known science, quite impossible. Yet it exists. I assure you, Mr. Dexter, that this... Well, it proves man is such a wonderfully, brilliantly unenlightened ape. Hey, wait a minute, Doc. Now... We've created wireless communication, electric light, automobiles, and let's not forget flight. That's pretty impressive for an unenlightened ape. Oh, magic tricks, Mr. Dexter. Illusions. You of all people should see that. Is the glow of that incandescent bulb above us true sunlight? No, of course not. It's an illusion, a mimicry, a sleight of hand. And once we know the trick, anyone can turn it off and on at will. I'm talking real magic, Mr. Dexter. Power of the gods, if you will. Power of the gods? Oh, you're wading in some dangerous waters there, Doc. Now I see why the university snatched their purse back. I'm a scientist, Mr. Dexter. Not a philosopher, nor am I superstitious. But I'm certain that once millennia ago, one man ridiculed by the majority set out to prove that he could fly like a bird. All we probably rubbed tar all over his body and, and covered himself in feathers that climbed to the peak of the highest cliff and then leaped off flapping furiously in the wind as he plunged to a messy doom. Uh, you just made my point exactly. No, Mr. Dexter. I made my point. There's always danger in exploring the unknown territory. In this case, the danger was discovering one of the numerous ways one cannot fly. I can make you famous again, Mr. Dexter. The power that I have discovered could easily be incorporated into your career. Make you a box office wonder again. No more shady burlesque theaters or stinking east side nightclubs. A headliner, Mr. Dexter. That's what you want, I know it is. I saw the frustration and despondency in your eyes tonight as you performed your wonderful show. For those who didn't even care if they existed, let alone could appreciate your talent. Oh, you long to fly again, Mr. Dexter. You saw my show tonight. Yes, indeed. <laughs> you deserve more. You can have it. All I ask for in return is the funding for one more expedition to find the last piece of the puzzle that I oh, see. Oh, okay. I knew this would come down to money sooner or later. Well, of course it does, Mr. Dexter. What doesn't? Miracles are not free, but once found... They are priceless. And I can prove it. Oh, yes, indeed. You didn't think I would simply expect you to take an old man's word at face value without offering up a glimpse of the treasure to tantalize you. Why do I suddenly feel like I'm the student and you're the magician pulling my strings? You know exactly what I'm going to say next. Tomorrow night, 9 p.m., my housekeeper should be gone by then. This is my address on my phone. I'll be expecting you. Yes, indeed. <laughs> hey, you're not just wasting my time, are you, Doc? 
Tell me you're not just some loony old crackpot professor with a monster in his basement, are you? <laughs> I don't have a basement, Mr. Dexter. And they don't give Nobel Prizes to loons, sir. Uh, can I get the coffee for you, Mr. Dexter? <laughs> I'm not that bad off. I can afford my own coffee, Doc. <laughs> yes, indeed. That I'm counting on. I did call. Ugh, shit! How the hell did you get in here? Well, I nearly didn't. Thank you so much for changing the lock. I've been trying to get you to do that for years. <laughs> Seems you forgot to do the same with the cellar door out back, though. You have to be more careful, dear. You don't want just anyone wandering in, do you? I'll have to make sure I get right on that. Oh, I'm sure you will. <sighs> I wasn't expecting company at 2 a.m., Agnes. I'm tired and I really haven't got I time for any of this. I said I called. I've been calling for three days. Not that you would have answered, even if you were here. <laughs> I've been busy. Hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Apparently. But it certainly hasn't been making money, has it, dear? Yeah, you know, listen... I'm tired, and I have a potentially important meeting tomorrow. I'm going to... M oh, Danny! An agent? Are you finally getting back on the big stage again? Oh, that's great news! <laughs> no, not an agent. Oh. Oh, it, it is a meeting about my career. Well, you see, you may make it back on top after all. Who is it, honey? A downtown theater mogul or a producer? Agnes, you're drunk. Trust me, I know a bad act when I see one, and I haven't got time for yours tonight. I trust you can find your way out. Don't you walk away from me. If I can't expect you to do the right thing by your own conscience, I'll do it for you. Let me spell it out for you. Where are my checks? Yes, plural. I count three so far you're behind on. Well, welcome to the party. I was wondering when the gold-digging, muddy-grubbing, selfish little Agnes would arrive. You never disappoint, do you? <laughs> oh, by the way, you may get along with the man I'm going to meet. He's an archaeologist, a real nutter. <laughs> Maybe pick up a few prospecting tips from him, huh? Archaeologist? Oh, you're a real bearer of laughs tonight. Do I need to remind you, Mr. Loser, that the only reason I'm keeping your sorry ass out of a messy divorce court is because of the little agreement we had? That's why I left you. Too smart to listen to anyone. Too smart to do anything for your own good. Huh. Funny. I seem to recall all that happening in a much different way. It was I who left you, Precious. I did listen to someone, and I finally came to realize that you love my pockets far more than you ever cared about me. Oh, yes, Ron. <laughs> How is he? If you see him soon, tell that shitty actor I said, Fuck you! And I hope he rots in a burning hell. Will you? For me? Don't blame Ron. He cared for me. We were happy, Danny. Don't blame this shit on me. Oh, please. You were never happy with anyone but yourself. And occasionally that little bank teller, um, 
God, what was his name? You know, the one who looked like a 16-year-old schoolboy, pimply-faced? What you ever saw in him? He must have been a real good screw. Let me skip to the punchline here. I am meeting a man tomorrow who may be able to help me get back on top again. And if by some miracle of fate this guy turns out to be legitimate, and I do make it, I'm doing it without you. Got it? I'm through. No more checks. No more anything. Not for me. So go see your boy at the bank. Maybe he can help you through the night. Oh, Danny, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Listen, if it's possible that you may be back on top again, I'll be there for you, Danny. I really will. Let me say this in a way that even your little inebriated mind can understand it. You son of a bitch. You're going to be yeah, so yeah, damn yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry move it. you move treated it. me move like it. this, you bastard. I'm going to a lawyer first thing Monday morning. I'm going to drag your sorry ass through the mud, you hear me? The mud. I'll have half of all of this soon. Well, what's left of it? You brought this on yourself, bucko. Your ass is mine now. I'm going to get what I deserve, you see? <laughs> what you deserve? <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't already got what you deserve, but I'm sure you will. Just be patient. You loser! You sorry goddamn! I'm I'm losing you. Where the hell's my shoe? <laughs> and his name was Brian, the bank teller. He was Brian, and yes, he was a great screw. No, he was an incredible screw. Huh. No. Huh. Wonderful, wonderful, Mr. Dexter. I'm so glad you made it. I was beginning to worry you had a change of heart. No, oh, please, please, come in. Come in, come in. Well, I have no heart on the subject yet, Doc. It's uh, pure curiosity that's driving me now. Well, I guess we have that in common, then. <laughs> it's curiosity that makes good science, too. Uh, hmm. <clears throat> uh, I, <laughs> I hope you don't take this the wrong way, Doc, but, um... I have to admit that I'm, um, I'm just a bit surprised, uh, to see where you live. Oh, come along, come along this way. Oh, I, I know what you mean, Mr. Dexter, yes. You, you would think that one with my career choice could afford better surroundings. <laughs> well, I've never been one for stuff. Oh, you know, the trappings of luxury one would assume I could afford. <laughs> Uh, they're really meaningless to me. I've always found far better things to spend my money on. And besides, um, there's a certain advantage to living here, as you will see in just a moment. <laughs> um, you see, I've a great deal of money invested in my interests, <laughs> and no one would ever suspect I have so many valuable things in this dwelling. No, it's practically a built-in theft deterrent, you see. <laughs> oh, this way, this way, this way. Here. Right here. Uh, let me show you my, my little playroom, Mr. Dexter. Go ahead. Open the door. It's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, the light switch is just to your left. Whoa. Well, now you see why it's so important to maintain a low profile. And I thought I had a collection. You literally own a museum. Um, Doc, 
how much of this stuff does the university actually know about? <laughs> I plead the fifth. I drink the fifth. Well, first off, let me get you a bit of a history lesson. The artifact that I'm about to show you was discovered in a hidden section of a very ancient temple slash tomb. So what is the it that you found? Oh, I'll get to that, don't worry. I stumbled upon it quite by accident. It occurred to me that the ancients wouldn't have built an entire wing and just leave it unused to serve no purpose and, and then seal it up as if trying to conceal it. So is this thing Egyptian? Well, Sumerian, to be precise. It predates the pharaohs by several centuries. Oh, here, here. I did a little research and discovered a connection between the artifact and ancient beings known as the Anunnaki. Anna who? No, it, it's not Anna, it's Anunnaki. Uh, basically Sumerian gods. It's quite well documented that the Anunnaki descended from the stars, according to legend, of course. It's written that the Anunnaki displayed incredible powers, taught the Sumerians the art of agriculture, architecture, and even the sciences uh, to a certain degree, yes. From the stars? You mean spacemen? Martians? <laughs> well, I won't make any conjecture on what or who the Anunnaki were, but because of the immense amount of documentation, I do know that there is more to their existence than mere legend, Mr. Dexter. You mean exist? Excuse me? Well, if they're gods, then they would still exist, right? <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> well, well, let me show you what I found. Ancient? That's ancient? <laughs> it's a toy pyramid. Hey, Doc, I am underwhelmed. Uh, tetrahedron. A pyramid has four sides. Uh, this has three, officially a tetrahedron. Oh, don't look so disappointed, Daniel. I'm not finished. <laughs> Let me show you what I discovered it can do. Hmm, it's kind of pretty. Some of this uh, it appears to be crystal or glass, but this doesn't feel like metal. What, what's this thing made out of, Doc? Have no idea. I've had two of the best metallurgists I know examine it and test it, and immediately offer to purchase it. It won't cut, and it won't melt. Of course, I was reluctant to put it into the blast furnace up at the university and risk losing it. <laughs> However, they quite crudely put a welder's torch to it, uh, unbeknownst to me, and it didn't even get warm. Really? Wow. <laughs> Very weird. Oh, that's nothing, Mr. Dexter. Observe. Well, it occurred to me after all the testing, x-rays and sonar and such that, well, there's one thing I hadn't tried. Simple electrical current. <laughs> well, I... Oh, I'll let you see for yourself. Oh, you might want to stand back a bit, Mr. Dexter. Oh, that, oh, that's, that's impressive. Okay, oh, uh, so yes. far so good. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, I just can't get enough of this. It's marvelous, I'm, isn't it, Mr. I'm Dexter? I'm getting just a bit concerned here. Oh, fuck me with a greasy two-by-four. <laughs> Holy sh- Oh my- Oh, the candlestick! It, it was there, and then, and then in here, and then, then you didn't, and I didn't, and then we- What the fuck? It moved! <laughs> it's called teleportation, yes indeed. <laughs> Pretty nifty, huh? Oh, oh god. Oh boy. Oh, oh boy. Uh, uh, Doc, uh, uh, holy shit. Yes, yes. <laughs> shit indeed. That was no magic trick, was it? Well, what do you think, Mr. Dexter? How much do you need? 
Yes, 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 indeed. <laughs> well, come, 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 come. I think you need to, to sit down. Um, uh, we can talk about this in the kitchen over a good, strong cup of tea. How's that? <laughs> come along, come along this way. Oh, that was, that was unbelievable. I mean, I just... <laughs> okay, listen, Doc. So you have this this miraculous whatever this thing is. Why do we need to go back on another mission? I mean, isn't this enough? Oh, I'm quite convinced, Daniel, that what I have in the other room is merely part of a whole. You see, once I discovered the object's special talents, <laughs> I began to research the Anunnaki extensively, which led me, quite by chance, to a small monastery in Tibet. I found a very, very rare volume, an ancient book that contained just the clues that I was seeking, and quite by happenstance, it literally fell in my lap. So how did you manage to convince them to part with their rare book? Oh, I didn't. I stole it. <laughs> what? Stole it? Well, it was all for the best, Daniel. Really, it was. The little monastery, well, it burned to the ground a week later. Oh, Doc, you didn't. Oh, no, no, of course not. Don't be silly. <laughs> Pure coincidence. But had I not the foresight and opportunity to stuff that book in my pants, <laughs> well, it would have been lost forever in a mere five days. There. <laughs> I'm glad I did it. <laughs> but look, look here. The monks didn't even know what they had. Well, they couldn't even read it. Oh, they just liked the drawings, I suppose. But on this page... I found the only reference to the device that I have ever to date found anywhere, right here. And most interestingly, you see here there are two of them, a pair. They work together as a whole. Up above we see the symbol of the Anunnaki, the religious leaders or the Anunnaki themselves. And you see down here, see these, these two funny little men here, guarding and protecting the device. And here below it, a single inscription. It says, To the temples of the sun and moon, we sleep and we wait. I know where it is, Daniel. Right where I found the first one. All right. When should we leave? We leave Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. We're flying. It's already set up. All you need to do is pack. I'll get the money together. You don't have to worry about that. Where exactly are we going? Right here. Primed and ready, we have a 20-minute taxi ride ahead of us and a, and a three-hour camel ride. Oh, joy. Oh, it's not all that bad, Daniel. They do have a distinctive smell, but most importantly, just keep your hands away from their mouth. They, they like to bite <laughs> and spit. Oh, well, my soon-to-be ex-wife does too, so I'm kind of used to it. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, come along, come along. You know, I still don't understand how you got the officials to let you into this site. 
Oh, I didn't. They don't know we're here. What? You mean we're here illegally? Why didn't you tell me this? Oh, don't worry, Daniel. Nobody ever pays any attention to this site. It's of no interest to anyone anymore. Why, we'll be in and out before anyone knows it. And you don't have to whisper. No one can hear us. Oh, God, I should have stayed home. <laughs> well, there's a choice. <laughs> Go on an exciting adventure to an exotic land, or stay at home and open up for a torch song singing transvestite who has a crush on you. Well, that doesn't sound too bad right about now. And it can't be any worse than the looks that camel was giving me on the way out here. And how do we even know what we're looking for? I mean, do you have any idea what this thing looks like or where it's at? Well, the last time I was in the cave, I noticed a wall that looked differently than the walls around it. Constructed differently. And... Oh my. Well, there it is. Daniel, that's it. I'm sure of it. These walls are very, very old. I have some tools back in my saddlebag. It shouldn't take much to open this wall up. Well, you're right, Doc. There it is. There's a tetrahedron thingy, but, um, what the hell's the rest of that mumbo-jumbo attached to it? Oh, my, indeed. <laughs> this is much more than I expected. You know, I've seen a lot of photographs of artifacts in magazines and stuff, but I have never seen ancient artwork like this in any picture. Well, that's because there is no ancient art like this. Daniel, I'm beginning to think that this is more of a machine than artwork. Machine? Built by gods? What kind of god needs a machine? Don't they just say, like, you know, Abracadabra or, or Zim Alabim or something like that? Well, I don't know where it came from, but I do know that any technology sufficiently advanced to us would appear to be magic. So what do you think it does? How does the other tetrahormone fit into all this? Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's a... Maybe it, well, maybe it's some sort of a, a power source. Or, well, you saw what it did to the candlestick. Maybe it's some kind of transporter or, or a radio to speak directly to the gods. I, I just don't know, but... We found it. <laughs> yes, indeed. We found it. <laughs> let's let's wrap it up and, and get some sleep. Uh, it, it's it's quite late, and and first thing in the morning we can make haste. Our pilot is this very special charter. Yes, he's, he's waiting for us back at the hotel. He asks no questions, especially about anything we may bring on board, <laughs> and he's ready to fly us back post haste. Hello there. Uh, it, it's 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 me. Uh, I, I I guess you know that. <laughs> I, I did what you asked me to do. I I got him here. I did. Yes, indeed. <laughs> you you promised me if I did what you asked, you you would reward me and release me from your service. Uh, I I did what you wanted. I did. He's here. I brought him. Uh, 
I, I, I don't understand why you needed him here. I, I would have done what you needed done if the reward was, was good. Yes, yes, indeed, I, I would have. Oh, do, do I get my reward now? Doc? Doc! Doc! Hey, Doc, where are you? Oh, God, Doc. Doc! Doc! Can you hear me, Doc? Oh, no, 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 Doc. Don't do this to me now. Oh, no, what? Oh, oh God. Oh, God, what am I going to do? Oh, Doc, what am I going to do? Okay, think, 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 think. Oh. Doc, Doc, wake up. Are you all right? Wake up, Doc. Doc, talk to me. Speak to me, Doc. What's wrong? Daniel. Daniel. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm sorry, Daniel. Greed. Uh, all, all greed and vanity. Uh, uh, very, very important, Daniel, Daniel. I hear you. Here. I'm here, Doc. I'm, I'm right come here. I hear you. Come here. Okay, okay. I can hear you. I can hear you, Doc. You must, you must defeat. Oh, Dad, Daddy, don't, don't let him in. Don't I don't understand. Him, don't let him have it. No, I promise, Doc. I won't let anybody have it. I no, won't. No, no, fight. Fight! Oh, 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 love, happiness. Doc, oh. I, I, I don't understand. Daniel, tears. tears. Yeah, Doc, I'm, I'm, I'm crying tears. I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. <sighs> oh, Doc, Doc, oh, God. Oh, no, 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 what am I going to do now? <laughs> so, how did you say this happened? Oh, I, I, I just found him unconscious on, on the floor of our hotel room. It, it was horrible. Mr. Dexter, it appears that your friend has suffered a sudden and massive heart failure. I don't think I have ever seen anything quite like it. There was no indication whatsoever of any heart condition that could have led to this. Uh, we cannot seem to find any reference of family in the States, so we will have to contact his university to get more information so we can release the body. Do you need anything more from me, sir? Oh, no, Mr. Dexter, you have been a great help. We will contact you should we have any further questions. Have a safe trip home, sir. Oh God, oh boy, oh, Jesus.
well, what the hell do I do with you? All right, who's there? Agnes, is that you? You get the hell out of here. How did you get back in here? No, Daniel. Here. Where are you? Who said that? Stop playing. We wish to become. What are you? Too difficult to explain in a way you would understand. You need me. What can I do? Help us become. What does that mean? To exist in your world. My world. And where exactly are you right now? Somewhere else. You would not understand. Well, I'm a, I'm pretty smart. Uh, try me. We will show you much. We can give you what you want now. And how do you know what I want? You want the past. You want fame. We can give you what you want. If you help us get what we want, let me show Yes. Yeah. Yes, if, if, if you can do this, I'll help. Yes. Then it begins. However, first we need your mind and body. Yeah, well, thanks, but I, I kind of need that too. <laughs> Ah! 
Ah. 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 Son of a... All right, all right, I'm coming. God, this has not been a good day. Hello. Dexter. I've been missing you. The last several days I tried calling. Even called that moron Ron. And no one seemed to know where you were. Oh, God. I Listen, I'm, I'm sorry, Stan, really. I, I had to go out of town on an emergency. It was a, it was a family matter. Ah, uh, don't worry about it, Danny. I gave Bishop a call. He's been uh, filling in for you. And, uh, as a matter of fact... Listen, I, I am really sorry, Stan. It, it was unexpected, uh, but, but it's all over now. <laughs> yeah, well, you're right about that, at least. <laughs> you see, Bishop has been, uh, packing your time slot every night, uh, Dexter. Oh, uh, I've looked forward to this moment for a long time. You're fired, asshole! F-Y-R-E-D, fired! So you can save your lies. I talked to Agnes. She said you were all fucking around with some college professor doing God knows what. So eat shit, loser. If all your magic shit is still in Bishop's dressing room on Tuesday morning, I'm going to divvy it up between the other acts and they can use it for whatever the hell they want. Got it, schmuck? Okay. I'll come in and get my last check tomorrow morning. You owe me a week. Check? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm a, I'm afraid not, Dexter. You pea brain. You see, I've docked your pay for breaching our contract. No show. The way I figure it, you fucking owe me. But out of the kindness of my heart, I'll forgive your debt. <laughs> Fired. See you on the breadline, loser. <sighs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Well, what now? Where the hell did that come from? Looks like some of Dexter's shit. Uh, you wanted to see me, sir? Hey, Ricky, come on in. Shut the door. So, um, how long you been working here now, Ricky? I think about seven months, I guess. So I understand you live with your grandmother. Uh, she takes care of you? Uh, what happened to your folks? I, uh, never knew my father. My mother, she got sick, and she's in the state hospital. Sick, huh? Oh, you mean she's in the mental ward up there at Dick's, huh? Uh, yes, sir. My, my grandma takes care of me now. Yeah, that's tough, kid. Real tough. Well, listen. 
You know, it's got to be tough on the old gal trying to take care of herself and a growing boy at the same time. So I figured, well, maybe you deserve a little more than what I've been giving you. I mean, you're a hard worker. You're polite, quiet. I really like that in a person. You never complain. A real good kid. Could you use a little extra money, Ricky? Well, yeah, sure, I, I, I guess. You see, Ricky, I'm always willing to reward those loyal few who understand. <gasps> the more loyal you are, the greater the reward. Are you loyal, Ricky? Hey, relax, it's okay. You just come in here a few nights a week and be loyal to me. I'll make sure you and your grandma have everything you need. Hey, what's wrong, kid? You all right? You know, Stan, I think you're right. Oh, yeah? Maybe I could use a little extra money after all. Really? Well, uh, uh... Oh, okay then, I, I guess, uh... How about we start with this? What the... What, what, what? <laughs> Lucille, what, uh, what's, what's going on here? Oh, Danny, I didn't expect to see you here so soon. Isn't it horrible? I've heard no news, Lucy. I don't know what you're talking about, though. It doesn't look good. It's murder, Danny. Can you believe it? Here, it's Stan. Stan was murdered last night, stone cold graveyard dead. What? Who would murder Stan? Oh, Danny, please. Just about anyone who's ever met him, I expect. It's horrible, Danny. I'm, I'm so scared. Oh, it'll be all right, Lucille. I'm sure the police will find whoever did this. My God, Stan. Oh, screw him. He got what he deserves, no doubt. What I mean is, oh, think about it. No suspects? There's a killer out there, Danny, somewhere. Who's next? Well, I'm sure the police will figure it out. Um, excuse me, Lucille. I, I actually came in here to get my things. Oh, when I heard, Danny, that Stan canned you. Well, don't feel bad, honey. Looks like we're all going to be looking for a new job now. Oh, oh, so scary, so scary. Bye-bye, <laughs> Danny. This ain't no peep show, Buster. Uh, excuse, excuse me, sir. Uh, this is the crime scene. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need you to move back a bit. Uh, well, he was my. Th this is um um. Okay, I'm speechless. Oh, you know the victim, sir? Oh, oh, I'm, I'm Dan Dexter. I perform here. Well, did perform here. Oh yes, Mr. Dexter, you're on our list to be interviewed. 
Uh, no better time than now, I suppose. Wow, I uh, I should have recognized you. You were on every main cover back. Uh, oh, Archie, oh, geez, I'm I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be rude. I'm not. I'm not insinuating. Uh, it's okay. It was a shit job, and I knew it. Stan Hardwick fired you yesterday. Is that correct? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Um, God, who could, who could have done something like this? Well, that's what we're trying to find out, isn't it? I, please, f forgive me for being so direct, but I have to ask these kinds of questions. <laughs> you want to know where I was last night? It's okay, I understand. Everyone is a suspect. Well, uh, yes. Unfortunately, that's true, sir. So, uh, where were you last night at 1 a.m.? Well, I went to bed around 11.30, didn't wake up till about 7.30 this morning. Home all night. No witnesses, just an alibi. So, I'm a suspect. Again, sir, I apologize. It's my job. I have to ask these things. To be honest with you, we're not even sure whatever did this was even human. <laughs> what? Well, what else could it have been? Some sort of animal attack. A wild animal? Here? In the city? Yeah, that's exactly what I said. The sheer viciousness of the attack. I mean, the nature of the wounds and the damage to the body... Well, it would have taken a stock raven lunatic with the strength of ten men to do that to another human being. So I say again, don't take the question in so harshly, because unless your name is Clark Kent, I doubt we're going to find the man behind this. Oh, well. Lucille might have been right after all, then. So whatever this is, is still loose out there somewhere. Well, we'll know more after the autopsy. The poor boy who found what was left of him isn't speaking either. Boy? What boy? Yeah, well, a stagehand, I think. Uh, one of the uh, acts found him here unconscious right here in front of the door. He must have passed out. I can't say as I blamed the kid. Ricky. Oh, God, Ricky. Is he okay? I mean, physically, the boy's fine. We're going to have a doctor check him over later. He's been sitting over there in shock. Can't get a word out of him. Oh, that poor kid. Hey, listen, can I talk to him? He's my friend, and he's been sort of infatuated with my magic shows for the last few months. Maybe if I speak to him, I can get him to say something. Yeah, sure. Anything you could do would be greatly appreciated. A familiar face may be just what he needs to snap him out of it. I'll have an officer stand by with a notepad in case he says anything that may be of use to us in this mess. So go ahead and try, Mr. Dexter. We'll see what you can do. Damn mess. Fuck Mondays. Ricky. Ricky. Look, it, it, it's me, Dan. It's Dan, kiddo. I'm here. You're going to be okay, Ricky. Listen, everything is going to be okay. Dan. I'm so scared. Did you see? Did you see Stan? I know, I know. I saw, Ricky. I saw. You're going to be okay. You're, you're going to be all right now. You shouldn't have seen that. I, I, I'm so sorry, Ricky. You're going to be all right. Do they think I did it? No, no, of course not, Ricky. No one thinks that. Trust me. Don't you worry about that. Not at all. They know it couldn't have been you or any of us. But how? Trust me, buddy. They know. I can't remember anything. I, I fainted. I guess they said I did. I, they, they said I found the body. All that blood. Shh, shh, shh. Listen, you don't have to remember now if you don't want to. It's all right. Remember that card I gave you backstage the other night? On the back of that is my phone and my address. Now listen, you don't need a special invitation. You can call or you can come over anytime you need anything, anytime you want to, okay? I'll be there for you, buddy. I'll be there, okay? Now remember, anytime you want, you call. All right, buddy? What? What did you just say? 
I didn't say anything, Mr. Dexter. Um, excuse me, officer. Did did you hear what he just said? I didn't hear him say anything important, but thanks for trying. Okay, so this is how it begins. But listen, I need a show. I need a new show. I need something, something spectacular, something so, so magnificent. Something that no one has ever seen before. This is the only way I can make this work. Can you do that? That is Dan Dexter seems to have no limits. Within the last several months, Dexter has emerged onto the stage from an 18-year vacation and taken the world by storm with a brand new Magic Illusion show which has fans and critics alike in awe and disbelief. There's no denying, this guy's show is the next best thing to real magic that anyone has seen in a long time on stage. His new dark and mysterious style and unexplainable stage stunts have been reported to have caused audience members to actually faint mid-show. There is also an uneasy buzz hovering like a storm cloud. Well, Danny, looks like you actually did it, you bastard. Time for a family reunion, I think. 
so I can claim my fair share. Well, thank you, Danny. You're so reliable. Hello? D D danny Danny, uh, are you home? Danny! Hello, hello. Are you here? Hey, asshole! Nope. I guess you're not here. Well, I can't get you to sign a check, so where do I begin? Wonder how much money I can get for some of this shit. I guess I'll start uh, loading up the car. Okay, who's there? Danny? Uh, is that, is that, is that you? Stop it now, that, that's not funny. I'm scared. <laughs> it was just a joke, Danny. I really wasn't going to take anything. Who'd want this shit? You're what? What? What the? What the fuck? What the hell is it? What? Oh, oh, Danny! 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 Oh, Danny! Ah, 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 ah. Danny! Danny! What? What the? A Agnes? What the? What the hell are you doing in here? Oh, Danny. I just wanted to spend one more night with you and say, Look what you've done to me! <laughs> Mr. Dexter. Detective? Well, this is unexpected. Um, here, come on in.
Detective, if you'll excuse me just a minute, I need to go finish getting dressed. I'll be right back. All right, Detective. So, to what do I owe this early morning and quite unscheduled visit? Uh, Mr. Dexter, I, I know this may sound silly, but I, I need to ask you about uh, your activities just prior to your boss's death. Uh, from what I understand, you were on a trip out of the country with a local college professor of uh, some notoriety, it seems. Mr. Carl Gettings, is that correct? Well, Detective, you have been the busy little bee, haven't you? Yes, as a matter of fact, I did go on a trip with a very close and dear friend of mine. You see, archaeology has always been one of my um, side interests, I guess you could say. And, well, when Carl asked me to go, I just couldn't resist. But, um, listen, I, I don't understand what this has to do with anything. Yes, well, I know it seems an unrelated question, but you know police. Our minds are constantly worrying, and... and I've discovered in the past there's no such thing as an insignificant question. However, what did pique my interest is that you never mentioned any of this in any of your interviews, nor the fact that he died of an apparent heart attack on this trip. Yes, that was tragic and very unexpected. He was a good man. Uh, but listen, Detective, I'm very busy. Unless you haven't noticed, I've been desperately working to get my life back on track again. And I'm trying hard to forget those unpleasant things in my past and, and, and just move forward to make a better life for myself. So I'm sure you'll understand my frankness here. I'm tired, I have a show in Concord tonight, and I need to get a little more sleep before I head to the airport. So unless you have anything significant to share with me... Oh, okay, okay. I'm I'm sorry for bothering you, Mr. Dexter. You're right. It's just it it's just my professional paranoia. A habit of the trade, I'm afraid. Well you have a nice night, sir. I'll be in contact. <laughs> yes. Well of that I have no doubt. I'm sure you can see your way out, Detective. Oh, and um if you don't mind, please pull the door shut behind you. I despise cold drafts. Oh, 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 what more do you want? What now? You have a taste now of what you want. You see, we have the power. So, what now? It is the essence of those we require. We need more from you. Let me show you what to do next. Uh, uh, uh.
Oh my god. Oh wow. Oh oh you're 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 Dan Dexter, aren't you? Yes, that's right, son. I sure am. What what are you do what are you doing here? Well, I came to ask you if you like magic, son. Well yeah. I got your magic kit at home. Well you see, I'm trying to find somebody just like you who wants to be my magical assistant and be in my show. Oh, me? You mean you'll teach me how to do magic? I can be in your show? You sure can. How would you like to come back to my place and see all my magic stuff? We can start this afternoon if you like. All right. Well, great. Come on, follow me. Woo! <laughs> Wow! Look at all this stuff! Is this all of your magic? No, this is just my library. Remember that big building beside the house that kind of looks like a church? Well, that used to be a church, and that's where I keep all my magic at. But I've got some very special pieces in here. See that box over there? Go take a look at that. I think you're going to find that very interesting. <laughs> well, what's in it? Well, it's magic. You have to go take a look. Go ahead. I am tired of repeating myself. You idiots! You've been told a thousand times what I expect, and it is not optional. So, who was it that packed it? Yes, oh, I, I it did. Was you. Oh, well then, you feeble minded imbecile. Hmm? Did I not specifically tell you that no one, absolutely no one but me, touches that box? I move it. I pack it. Me alone. You nearly cost me everything, you pathetic sack of worthless shit! You deserve far more than this! Get out of here now! You're fired! I don't want to see your pathetic face again! You sicken me! Ugh. Danny? Hello, Ron. Didn't know you were here. Danny? Danny? Uh, uh, wait, wait a minute. Hey, Danny, I know, I know you weren't expecting me. I, I happened to be in town and I really had to see you. Um, you gotta forgive me. I'm, 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 I'm actually a little shocked right now. Yeah, well, um, I'm sorry you had to see that. Huh? Good help's hard to find nowadays, huh? Yeah, well, listen, Danny. Under the circumstances, I I think I better just get right to the point. Now, this this won't only take a moment. I, I need to tell you why it is I've been trying to find you. Listen, if it's about that uh, little incident, you don't know the whole story. He deserved what he got. No, Danny, that's not it. However, that was eye-opening. I do want to ask you, though, Danny, is there anything that you need to talk about? Anything at all? Anything you need to tell me? We've been friends a long time, Danny, and... We used to confide in each other all the time about things, no matter how private or how personal. You know we were always there for each other. And I want to be here for you now, Danny. What? No, no, I'm fine. 
I've, I've actually never been better. Haven't you seen, Ron? My new shows are headlining. I have all those pompous bastards at the Magic Castle and the IMS baffled, even frightened. Finally, I've showed them a thing or two. Box office sales are through the roof. It, it couldn't be better, buddy. I'm not just talking about your shows, Danny, even though that's a mystery in itself. I, I'm talking about you. Danny, you've changed. You're, you're different. You, you've become... Smarter. I've become smarter, Ron. What are you concerned about? I took your advice. I grew. I wised up. I, I finally dumped all the losers and leeches who were holding me down. Ron, I saw my potential and I, I acted on it. Isn't that what you wanted for me? Well, sure, Danny, but remember, I've known you since we both began. And you were never so, uh, so callous, so cold or distant. Hell, what I just saw in there, it was violent. It was cruel. I don't know that, Dan. In the 35 years we've been friends, I've never known that, Dan. Oh, Ron, not you too. Why didn't I see this coming? You're jealous. Jealous? What? Oh, that's it. You're jealous of my success. Well, you're, you're still playing the off-Broadway gigs, and now you're jealous because I found my way back. Danny, I was playing regional theater when you headlined 25 years ago. I wasn't jealous then, and I'm not jealous now. That's bullshit. Huh. I thought you were my friend. I am your friend, Danny. Otherwise, this conversation would not be happening. I'm not jealous. Danny, I'm frightened. Frightened? Of what? I am seeing and I'm hearing things that I cannot explain, Danny. And all those rumors about people around you dying and missing. Listen, I've got connections, too, especially down at the police department, and, well, I've heard they've been watching you, Danny, closely, for some reason. Oh, really? Hmm. Well. How are you doing all this, Danny? Doing what, Ron? Oh, don't act stupid, Danny. You know I'm talking about the magic. Why, well, you taught me my first magic trick 35 years ago. I know a lot of your secrets and your gimmicks, too, but what you're doing on stage now, Danny, I... I've never seen anything like it. The hell, nobody has. How are you doing it? Danny, does this have something to do with that trip you took to Egypt or, or that professor who died? Oh, well, so you're spying on me too, huh? No, I am not. I have friends too, Danny. Same friends and connections that you do. And they're very concerned for you. Hmm. Well, I never thought it would come to this. But I guess it's time. I can see, Ron, that your jealousy, admit it or not, is clouding your judgment. I'm back where I want to be. I got my name back in every magazine and tabloid in the U.S. <laughs> I can't keep up with the booking offers. My manager had to hire a manager. I'm big again, Ron. <laughs> I've got the power now. Power? Listen to yourself. Don't call on me again, Ron. You're pathetic. I should have dropped your dead weight years ago. <laughs> you act concerned about me, and the whole time you were trying to hold me down. Well, no more. You stay out of my life. Stay out of my business. And don't call and reverse the charges. Consider our friendship canceled. Danny, please. Danny, now wait a minute now. Da just listen. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> Showed the darkness to you, too, did he? What? What are you talking about? Oh, I'm not just talking about that little incident a moment ago. He scares the hell out of people. Oh, everywhere he goes. <laughs> Why, the theaters he plays in. People hear strange noises when he's around. See things. Things they can't explain. He's scary. <laughs> he's scary, all right. More to that boy than meets the eye. I'd say it's probably best he dropped you as a friend, boy. You just take my advice and you stay away from him. Bad news. <laughs> Bad news. Thank you. 
Hey, Daddy. Daddy. You, you left your front door wide open, Daddy. You don't want to do that out here in the country. Moose and, and gophers and elephants and shit can get in, Daddy. Hello, you home? I'm, I'm, I'm sneaking in now, Daddy, like a cat burglar, and I have no idea why. Uh, maybe I've just done way too much damn theater. Okay, Daddy, are you home? Oh, Danny boy, I've come to steal all of your shit. Now, Daddy, don't, if you don't come out now, Danny, I'm, I'm going to continue to sing really bad Irish songs, Danny. Don't let this old Irish boy down now. Come on out. Seriously, Danny, I've, I've come to say I'm sorry and that your friendship means a lot to me, Danny. I'm here, Ron, in the study. Come on in. Oh, thank God, Danny. I was starting to think I was wasting all this apologizing on the bats and the mice. Why the hell did you buy such a creepy place? I was really, really sorry about what took place last night, Danny, and, and I, I just didn't want to break up a friendship over something so trivial. Well, let's just sit down and let's talk, Danny, a little bit. And... And... Danny? <laughs> da Danny? Now, now, come on now. now where, where are you? This ain't funny. Here I am, Ron. Holy son of a turd on a hot tin roof! <laughs> Daddy? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, my mistake. I'll just be going now. Oh, oh, oh shit, now, now come on, come, calm down now. Oh, crankshaft, there's two of you. <laughs> okay, okay, oh, hold, 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 oh my god, a whole damn posse. Oh, oh, oh no, come down now. Ow, ow, ow. Calm down, fellas. No need for violence. Well, if it's about your faces, well, I know a good dermatologist. I got money. Money, is that what you want? I got money. Oh, oh, well, that hurts now. Oh, well, that Oh, Danny. Danny. A little help here, Danny. A little help. Oh, shit. It's leprechauns. I was just kidding. I'm not even Irish. <laughs> Larry, 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 does it really help you solve a case by sitting and staring at newspaper clippings and photographs for hours on end? I don't know. There's just something not right here. There's a trail of corpses and missing poisons. We all seem to have some kind of connection with Dexter, yet there's no motive, no clues, none of the usual cues that would make him a prime suspect. It's just kind of the gut feeling, you know, that's what I got here, this gut feeling that, I don't know, somehow there's more to all this than Dexter's telling us. Okay, okay, lay it on me. What has he said or done to cause so much suspicion? 
Huh? Yeah, well, that's the weird thing, Andy. You see, at first, he was all out in spades for helping. Seemed a really great guy, really concerned. See, but then I found out he was withholding some information about a trip he took overseas and the death of a local university professor. At first, I thought it couldn't possibly be connected, but then, see, he began to change. His personality, he became, I don't know, darker, rude, mean even. And the more I question him, the more uncooperative he gets. Well, lots of famous people are unimaginable jerks. That doesn't make him a criminal, Larry. Hey, have you ever known my gut to be wrong, Andy? I'm keeping an eye on this guy, I'm telling you. I don't know how, but he's connected to all this somehow. Ah, oh, come on, Larry. You said it yourself. How could he have possibly had anything to do with the disappearance of this, this actor fella, or his ex-wife for that matter? I mean, you told me yourself he had a rock-solid alibi. He was out of town at the time. And from what I've seen on that board over there, surely you're not implicating that he has something to do with all these missing children, too, huh? Oh, you are, aren't you? Oh, my God, you think he has something to do with that, don't you? Oh, Larry, 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 I hope you got some solid evidence here before you start waving around your badge. <laughs> this could get you in some deep kimchi, buddy. I know, I know. But remember, this gut's never wrong. Fuck Mondays. It's Tuesday, Larry. <laughs> Fucking bite me, Andy. Wake up, Ricky. Ricky, wake up. Dan? Is that you? Yes, that's right. It's me, Ricky. I need you to do something for me. I've got a really big magic trick I'm working on, and you're going to be my star. I need you to come to me, Ricky. Follow my voice and come to me now. Why do I feel so funny, Dan? I know it feels kind of strange, Ricky, but trust me, you're going to be just fine. You follow my voice and we're going to have a great time together. Come to me, Ricky. <laughs> we're going to have fun.
Okay, Dexter, it's you and me now, buddy. How does all of this fit? Missing boys, missing friends, missing ex, and wait a minute. Son of a bitch! The stagehand! Ricky! He's... Ah, oh, shit!
immediately, like now. I'm at Dan Dexter's place, 1313 Raven Lane. Okay, what's the nature of the disturbance, Larry? What? Listen, I'm not exactly sure what the nature of this disturbance is, but you better hurry. Mr. So Larry, is this a real emergency? All the guys are on call right now. How much backup do you need? But how much backup? Just send them all, damn it! It with you. This is all a dream. You're just dreaming and, and you're, you're gonna wake up soon, okay? But until then, you need to do something for me. Now listen very carefully. When I say go, you need to run. Run as fast as you can. Do you understand me? I know that this place is strange, but you need to run that direction as fast as you can. You'll come out behind my house. When you see my place, you keep running. You run and you run until you get home. Do you hear me? Run until you get home. I, I promise, Ricky, you wake up tomorrow morning and this will all be a bad dream. I'm so sorry, Ricky. Sorry about what? Listen, Ricky. I don't think they can hurt me. I think I'm, I'm, I'm somehow a part of them. And if they hurt me, they'll hurt themselves. They need me. I want you to remember this before you go. You're going to hear some things in the news, and people talking, some bad things about me, okay? I, I want you to know that they're not all true. I love you like the son I never had. I'm just sorry I never saw it until now. Don't worry, Dan. I know. I always did. I wish you could be my dad. Ready? Ricky, go! Go now! Run! Run, boy! Run! Don't stop! Don't look back! Just keep on running! Go! Run, boy. Run. And you, you bastards, you cowards, you can't hurt me, can you? You need me, don't you? And it was when I showed compassion that you... Oh my God. Hide. Oh, 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 love. Happiness. Talk, I, I, I don't understand. Daniel. Tears. Oh, I know how to stop you. And there's not a damn thing you can do about it. You hear me? Go back to wherever it is you came from, you motherfuckers!
for Doc. And this is for Ron. And this is for Ricky. And all the innocents. Right, Dexter, where's the boy? Don't, don't make me shoot you. I, I will if I have to. Impeccable sense of timing there, Detective. The boy is just fine, don't worry. Son of a... What the fuck is all this, Dexter? What the hell's going on here? Tell me this is some kind of magic trick or something. You can go ahead and shoot me now if you have to, Detective. I probably deserve it after all I was accomplice to. But I just want you to know for the record that it wasn't me who did it. You saw for yourself. They lied. They used me. I need to put this thing someplace where no one's going to find it for a very long time. I'll be back and then I'll go with you. Peacefully. You saw it with your own eyes, Detective. What you saw was no magic trick. Let me stop it now. think fast and I didn't have a lot of time to give the box a proper burial, so I pulled up the floorboards in a servant's house located in the back of my property. I wrote a cryptic little warning on a scrap piece of paper, sort of a poem. What can I say? I'm a theatrical guy, okay? And I put that inside of the box as sort of a warning, just in case. I wrapped the whole thing in an old sheet and placed it under the floorboards in one of the bedrooms of the house. I figured I'd have plenty of time in the asylum to sell the house and all my belongings and have the whole damn thing bulldozed back to hell, or Mars, or wherever it came from. Look, Dexter, I don't understand what just took place here. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't want to know. Ever. But you know, I gotta do this. I know you do, Detective. And I want you to. I'm not gonna try to explain what just took place here and what you saw. They're probably gonna lock me away in some asylum somewhere, so... Come visit me. Over time, I'll explain it all to you. But you're a pretty smart fella. I just want you to know that uh, today, you, Detective Wolf, helped save the planet. Is the boy okay? He's fine, Detective. He's gonna wake up tomorrow and this will all have been a bad dream. Listen, Detective, do me a little favor, okay? You take care of him, all right? I mean, if you have to sell everything out of my estate, you take that money and you take care of that boy. And his grandmother, too. Can you do that for me? You gotta promise me that now. Yeah. Yeah, I will. Yeah, sure. Larry, what the hell just happened here? When I pulled up, I saw some things I'm gonna have a little trouble putting into a report there, buddy. You need to explain something to me. It, it was it was nothing. We got Dexter. Game over. Yeah, but I tell you... Listen. I... Listen. The man is a magician, all right? He was, he was just playing with your mind. That's all you saw. That's all my report is going to say. Understand? <sighs> Fuck Mondays. It's Wednesday, Larry. <laughs> Fucking bite me, Andy.
well, I guess that's why I'm writing this, so at least you or someone will know. For 60 years, the school kids won't be screwing up my story around campfires or twisting it all out of proportion in the school cafeteria. At least this way I can set the record straight, even if they don't believe it. <laughs> well, I guess that's all for... What the hell? Well, looky here. Isn't this an unexpected surprise? Oh, man. I'm so embarrassed. After after all that's been said about me in the news, you're the last person I would have expected to see here. But, oh, God knows it's so good to see you. It's, good, it's, it's so good to see anybody. Uh, hey, wait a minute. Uh, you, you're alone. There, There's no nurse and no interns. I, how, how did you manage to get in here alone? Well, that's... That's against the rules. That's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> Oh! <laughs>